Yeah. Yep. Okay, I'm Alan, and I'm talking to you from the Woodstock Food Festival. And um, just to tell you a bit about myself, I'm 70 years old next year. Um, I've only eaten raw fruit and vegetables for the last 13 years. And I guess our, our claim to fame is that uh, last year, in 2013, we ran around Australia. So we actually, yeah, so we actually ran uh, 10,000 miles around Australia. We ran a marathon every day, so a marathon's like 25 miles odd, 26, and we ran a marathon every day for a year and a day. So we ran 366 marathons during the year, and uh, it went really well. We've uh, the, the main reason we did it was just to raise some awareness that uh, a couple of old old grannies in their 60s and 70s can actually run a, a marathon fueled entirely on plant-based food. So I'm Janet and um, we ran the marathon together. Just to let you know, we each did a marathon every day, 366 marathons. And I'm 65 and it really, the idea of running around Australia came um, when we moved there about uh, six years ago and we wanted to bring a really positive message to as many people as we could for as long as we could and bring that by example of what's possible when you're living a conscious lifestyle and um, and eating raw, uh, ripe, organic fruits and vegetables. And what started uh, it possibly started us on a raw vegan diet is um, about 13 years ago I was diagnosed with cancer and I was told I had six months to live and I decided that that probably wasn't a good idea for me. <laughs> I wanted to live a lot longer. I was um, you know very happy and healthy I thought and so um, I trusted in my body to be able to change that prognosis if I gave it the right the right tools to do the job it's designed to do which is to keep us healthy and and um, in a state of optimum health throughout our life and so I made some choices some really conscious lifestyle choices that changed everything including the prognosis so 13 years later we were able to run a marathon every single day for 366 consecutive days um, as an example of what's possible, not only physically but mentally and emotionally. Uh, so running a marathon every single day is um, for that long is, is certainly a physical feat but it's also uh, it's, it's also mental and, um, and emotional in ways that uh, is hard to imagine. But um, we were able to do that because of the food that we're eating and the food that we're eating is the most nutrient laden food that you can get. So that was the idea of going 100% raw, raw plant-based diet when I was diagnosed so that I could get 100% nutrients from the food to help my body heal itself. And um, so with, with that experience, we, uh, we both wanted to share as, you know, as much of that knowledge and, and um, experience that we had uh, through that journey with as many people as we could so that they could make their own informed choices um, and you know we just became very passionate about wanting to share a really positive message um, about being conscious about every choice we make in life and and so it's eating a plant-based uh, diet and eating it raw is um, not only a healthy choice but it's also um, a choice that is through kindness and compassion to others so thinking of the animals for instance we don't eat any animal products whatsoever and um, clearly that's not necessary for your health or for your physical performance because I think we've proved that point but 
also for the ethical choice of doing no harm to others and other living beings that we should share, be sharing this planet with and um, also taking care of the planet in doing so. And so um, it's the only home we have and we, we, I feel, we feel that it's our responsibility as human beings and humankind to take care of our home, especially for, um, for now, but also for future generations, for our children and our grandchildren. So um, that was the reason that we wanted to run around Australia and run a marathon a day for that long so that it would really um, bring people's awareness um, up to a level of wanting to ask questions and find out why. One of the most common questions for us was, um, that, that's not possible, how did you do that? And really, there was certainly some training that was required, but um, the main thing was being able to be really well nourished and have clarity of mind um, to be able to focus and um, and believe in in what we're doing and why we're doing it and how important it is for the world to know about it. We did choose to run this wearing uh, Vibram, five finger shoes, and interestingly enough we went through 16 pairs each, which may sound like a lot, but that boils down really to 23 marathons for every pair of shoes. So about every 23 days we put on a new pair. Um, we found that we ran injury free. The roads up in the north of Australia, all up around here, are really a chunky sort of a tar seal with big rocks and often we stood on those rocks and often at the end of the day our feet were, were quite tender but uh, we'd either soak them, uh, soak them in icy water perhaps. We learned a trick because it was really hot up there so each day we alternated three different pairs during the day and we kept two pairs in the freezer and that felt really good on a hot day. Putting on a pair of frozen shoes is the best. <laughs> we had and we had days of um, 44 degrees, that's like 111 degrees Fahrenheit and the temperature coming off the road was close to 120 so um, that was a bit of a problem because we could protect ourselves from the sun but we had a lot of radiant heat coming up and uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that. That was, and we had a few other challenges. Mostly, it was to do with the weather. Um, the terrain wasn't too bad. We had a few, uh, quite a few hills, and and some, you know, different changes of altitude, but nothing that was, um, you know, too too much for the training that we'd done. But the it was the weather conditions that really um, posed problems sometimes. So we had extreme heat. We also went through um, the bushfire season and had a couple of very close to a couple of really serious bushfires that we went through. Um, we also had uh, some really, really cold weather when we got to the west coast and probably one of those days was probably our worst where um, we, we were getting to a stage of hypothermia running uh, where our crew couldn't stop for us so just because they couldn't actually pull the vehicles over and we had to keep running in horizontal rain, um, freezing, you know, sleet and, and really strong headwinds. Um, but luckily we were able to, to stop at, at eventually before, before we dropped and it, it very quickly recovered. Um, once we got dry and warm and had something to eat, we were able to uh, go back out there and keep going. So um, that was another thing that we found was really interesting that the body could recover really quickly once once we got that um, you know that high nutrient laden food in there. And yeah, and there were a few other times when we were out in the desert and we were on long straight roads for days and days and days. So that was a real uh, head challenge, you know, really keeping your mind focused. And there were a few times when we um, 
we'd start going out in the morning and it was dark every morning that when we started and we'd we kind of wonder if we were going the right way because that road is straight for days and days and you're thinking um is this way we came or is that the way we're going uh, so we had to navigate by the stars and you know if the the, in, uh, in Australia, the Southern Cross is a constellation of stars that are very, very clear. It's a, it's a cross that is in the southern sky. So if it was in, in the wrong place, it meant we were going the wrong way. <laughs> so I had to turn around and go back. Uh, a couple of times that happened. So, you know, funny little incidences like that. We certainly met some um, incredible uh, creatures out there. So a lot of amazing animals, wild animals, native animals of Australia um, that, you know, are wandering free and being able to, uh, to meet them, um, especially in some of the circumstances, like at night running into a, a herd of wild horses or um, or during the day coming across a little dragon in the middle of the road and rescuing him, getting him off the road before the trucks came. Um, different things like that that was really interesting. We, um, we went through an area where there were a lot of dingoes, which is the wild dog, a bit like a coyote. Um, and they, they roam in packs. And uh, in the mornings when we were in the area where, the, where they were a lot of, we would hear them um, howling to the moon and it, it was really a beautiful thing that we that we were um, able to hear and witness uh, we had them running with us sometimes where they would be running a few few um, yards away from from us and just keeping pace in different times it was pretty special so we had a lot of um, really wonderful experiences like that that you would never have otherwise if you were you know just in your normal way of life going to work and things like that. So they were really special. Um, but we met a lot of wonderful people as well on the, uh, on the road and um, everybody was really supportive and, and um, really, really loved what we were doing for the message that we were, we were sharing. Uh, we certainly had a lot of people stop and say, you're absolutely crazy, you know, you, you shouldn't be doing this. But by the time, you know, they finished talking with us, they were saying, well, just keep going, you know, because it's such an important message. And I think they were thinking it was better you than me, but <laughs> that they, they're really behind us and supporting us. So, um, and it was more the fact that they were supporting why we were doing it rather than, you know, for us to, you know, be out there running every day. So it, uh, it was great. We ran injury free, like I was saying before, we didn't really from ever running. get a typical injury from running. But both of us fell very heavily a couple of times. Mm. And uh, one day there, Jeanette fell really heavily. She took a big, a big chunk out of her shoulder, her elbow and her knee. Didn't look, re didn't look very good. But worse than that was she actually cracked her rib. And um, I said at the time, that come on I'll just I'll just get you off the road and we'll see what we can do and she's no don't don't touch me don't touch me I'm too sore so I said well we've got to do something because there's a large truck coming and you've got to get off the road so we did and for about half an hour she sat there sort of nursing her wounds and then we started running or walking at first and then running and finally we got into a, a very slow run and finally we got to the caravan and um, dressed up some of the wounds and put a big uh, bandage around the ribs and we were able to carry on that day and that happened to myself as well and uh, sometimes with uh, cracked ribs the second day can be worse than the first day when you wake up in the morning sneezing or sneezing or coughing there's no fun or laughing <laughs> yeah so yeah so we did have some injuries um, but we don't we don't take any painkillers or any any kind of drugs or stimulants or anything like that at all um, because we, we really want to know what the body's doing and then what the messages are that it's giving us and if we're in pain it's a good thing because we know um, that we're in pain and where that pain is and where it's coming from and how to you know maybe back off a little bit if we if we, well in our case we we we're committed to keep going, so um, so at least we were able to you know uh, do it at a rate that wasn't going to injure us further. And um, eventually, over you know a few days, we 
the healing process started and pretty soon we were almost back to normal. <laughs> and an interesting thing was that I think the first 10 marathons were probably the hardest, even though we had trained for a whole year beforehand. It's very hard to train for an event like that. Mm -hmm. So the first uh, 10, 10 days were hard. But interestingly enough, the last 100 days were our easiest marathons. Yeah. So as we were running, we were still getting fitter. We lost a small amount of weight, but even that, in the last 100 days, we, we started putting weight back on again. So, in fact, we felt, off, a couple of days before we finished, I thought, hey, we could do this again. <laughs> and then I took a good look at myself and uh, <laughs> decided, decided that's, started, that's not what we should do. But. So we do have a lot of people ask us, so are you going to do it again? And we go, well, we've been there, done that. We'll, we'll think of something else. And we, uh, another question is often, um, well, are you still running and are you still eating raw vegan food? And our answer is, why would you stop doing something that works? Uh, absolutely, we're still running every day. We're still eating more <coughs> vegan food and we're still getting healthier every day. So it, it doesn't stop. It's, the, it's unlimited the potential that the human body has to offer to us. And so um, we're, we're just excited to, to see what, what's going to happen next. Well, you know, here at the Woodstock Food Festival, there's a beautiful lake mm -hmm. right on our doorstep. And we've been here for 14 days and we've run around that lake 14 times. We start 6.30 every morning and usually we pick up some runners that are keen to come with us. And in fact this morning we did it twice, we did two loops. That's about fun. six miles. Yeah, it's a six around. mile loop, that's right. So, so it's a nice hour's run in the morning, seeing the sun come up, I mean, it doesn't get lot, a lot better than that. And I think if you do the maths, I think this, just in the last two weeks we've done about 75 miles just around the lake. So um, since we finished the, the run, we've had a lot of media coverage and a lot of people interested in having us come and speak. So we've, we've kind of been on the road or in the air um, doing a lot of events. And that's wonderful because um, we, we still want to, um, to help share that information with as many people as possible. But we were approached uh, a few months ago by a filmmaking company, um, or a filmmaker who whose company wants to make a movie and they want to really make a, um, a cinematic standard movie that's based on the run but um, is bringing that message that you know the idea is to bring that message forward in a really positive beautiful way and so we we kind of have to go out there and do a bit of a rerun to do some cinematic shots but using a lot of the raw footage that we took on the run as well and um, with different interviewing various different other people that have made um, changes in their lives that have made a huge difference to their health and their well-being. And so that's um, hopefully going to come out in time for the Cannes Film Festival in France. And that's the idea so that it will really go into cinemas and be, you know, um, able to bring the message to everyone. And so at the moment we're crowdfunding for that. You can, you can find us on our website, you can find a link through to the film um, crowdfunding as well. And the website is really easy to remember, so you just need to remember what, did we, what we did, runningrawaroundaustralia.com. So runningrawaroundaustralia.com. And that has links through to our Facebook page and keep in touch because, you know, we, we still would love to, um, make contact with as many people as we can and, and um, bring this really good message through to everyone. And I've written two books. Uh, one was uh, based on, the, um, on my journey with cancer and journey into a, a more conscious uh, raw vegan uh, lifestyle and uh, that's called Raw Can Cure Cancer. And um, then the other book I've just finished, it's called Running Out of Time and that's based on the run and um, it has an account of every day as well as uh, a few other little stories of incidences that happened and uh, some, some recipes in there too. So uh, you'll be able to find those on our website. 
So at the moment we have all the uh, copies with us here at the Woodstock Food Festival, but we will have them available on online uh, by the time we get back, which is around October. So keep in touch and um, we'd love to contact anybody and everybody. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you.